Looks like it's addressed to one of our students. Wait, is this actually for you? Well, the writing's so shaky, I didn't recognize your name. It's from an Andre... something. I don't recall the student with such a foreign name. The only one that comes to mind is... Bebe. Hello. It is me, Bebe. Writing in your language is difficult, so forgive me if it is hard to read. I learned a lot in Japan, but I still need lots of help. I write this with a dictionary. I showed Uncle the kimono. He said many wonderful things about it. He said Japan is a great country. I was thrilled to hear it. So I tell Uncle that I want to go back to Japan. I tell him over and over. Finally, he says, okay. But I decided not to go back. I am sorry. I said I would come back, but it was a lie. I didn't know. My aunt was not the only one who helped me study abroad. Uncle, relatives, neighbors, so many people helped me. They all wanted me to go back. They said they would help pay for it. But Uncle is sad after he lost my aunt. While Uncle grieves, I would not be able to enjoy myself in Japan. I cannot take everyone's money for my own fun. Besides, I can learn about Japan here, in France, too. And so, in France, I will stay. Someday, I will return to Japan on my own, without anyone's help. I reflected on how fun it was to make clothes with you. So, I enrolled in fashion school. I made some clothes for the school contest. And I won first prize. I have come up with a name for my winning design. A very wonderful name, I think. It is a name that means a lot to me. Japan and France, you and me, all so far apart. But I am always here for you. No amount of distance will ever change that. Every day was so much fun. More fun than I have ever had. I hope I get to see you again, someday. To my precious friend, Bebe. Are you going home now? Okay, then I am too. At least I want to, but I've actually got somewhere to be today. Wait, really? Uh, nah, maybe you shouldn't. I'm actually planning on going to the public library. It's because, like, there weren't any books about sports physiology and stuff at the school library. I'm gonna head out first to get some studying done, okay? I mean, if I had a friend there, we'd totally end up chatting the whole time instead of studying. Hmm. But since we've already bumped into each other, want to chat for a little longer? At least until we reach the entrance. Well, I'm gonna head off. Yep, I've been doing it every day. Aren't I awesome? Hey, remember what I told you before? About finally finding my dream? I never had anything to work towards until now, so... I'll admit... I'd been slacking off. Mm, to be honest, my grades really suck. It's been tough getting them back up. Like, I have no idea what chemistry and all that stuff is about. Seriously, it's like a foreign language. So that's why I really gotta buck up. <laughs> to tell you the truth, 
I really just want to sit back and enjoy life. But I gotta be patient. That's what I have to keep telling myself. I'm gonna take my dreams into my own hands. And then I'm gonna do some more studying and then get a job. But after that, we should totally hang out again. We can invite everyone from the track team too. Ooh, how about we have a drinking party? Since we'll all be adults by then. Um, well, anyway, I'll be focusing only on my studies for now. So don't try to tempt me with anything. Today, I'm gonna work on three subjects at once. Impressive, right? Whoops, I better get going. I still need to buy dinner. We'll see ya. Oh, good timing, man. There's something I wanted to talk to you about. I went back to the hospital to get a checkup on my knee. The results are in. <laughs> it's 100% healed. They said I can run all I want now. Dude, I was so happy. I almost broke the doctor's back. I hugged him so hard. But thinking about it now, how would things have gone if I'd kept running through the pain? I was pushing too hard, only thinking about myself. I got pissed off when things didn't go my way. So I threw out the advice I got and shot my knee to hell. Man, I was such a moron. At least I can see it now. I kept saying it was all for my nephew, but in the end, it was just about my own damn pride. I got you, everyone on the team, and my parents all worried about me. I didn't even stop to notice. I was a real selfish brat. <laughs> Seriously, it pisses me off just thinking about it. Well, it took me this long, but at least I finally snapped out of it. Thanks, man. It's because of you I'm standing here on two feet. I swear, things will be different from here on out. I want to repay you all for what you've done for me. No more stubborn pride. I'm gonna listen to what others have to say. Even when it's not what I want to hear. Well, that's about it. I just wanted you to be the one I break the news to first. I'll run around to the faculty office and club room later to let everyone else know. Have a good one. I was just looking for you. This came for you. It's from Hayase. I bet his school is sorry he's gone. Oof, he was a heck of an athlete. But it's good news for us. Now there's nothing standing between us and total victory. Well, I'll see you around. How's it going? I don't know your address, so I'm sending this to the school. I'm doing good. I'm starting to get used to the job, too. But the real reason I'm writing is because of track. Before, I'd pretty much given up hope of ever continuing. Except there was a part of me that refused to let it go. I don't care what it sounds like. Track and field was my whole life. I guess the factory manager realized what's up, and he wants to help me out. We're gonna make a track team here. Well, I call it a team, but it's really just a few guys at the factory. We practice after work and sometimes on our days off. The other day we did endurance swimming at Lake Biwa. We've even climbed Mount Hiei. We don't have fancy equipment like before, so we're not as efficient, but I'm still having a blast. Most of the guys are just in it for fun. So I don't really get to do any serious training. But I guess it'll even the playing field for them. How about you? You're still at it, right? I'm sure you're just gonna keep getting better and better. It's weird how badly I want to see you improve. Look. One day, you and I are gonna go at it again. And if I'm gonna be a good rival, then I've got a lot of work to do. It feels nice having a goal to work toward. Almost forgot what it was like. Oh yeah, and my mom's getting better. She's in a long-term care facility with lots of fresh air. My relatives and friends come by the house, so my siblings are in good hands too. Things have been pretty great these days. I feel like I can take care of the people who matter to me. It's really fulfilling. I get to feel that way because of you. 
So, thank you. Can't wait to see you again. Anyway, you've been different lately, Miss Toriyumi. You're looking more and more like a professional. Your lesson the other day really caught my eye. It seemed like you spent a lot of time preparing it. I've never seen you so passionate about teaching before. It's unparalleled. Unparalleled? Well, yes, I have been studying while making preparations lately. Things like how to best communicate the lessons I'm looking to teach. <laughs> I guess it does seem kind of out of the blue, huh? The thing is, I've decided to stop wasting my time only looking at what's right in front of me. How wonderful! I'm impressed by your change of heart. What brought this on? Well, when I was just goofing off one weekend, I met someone. After that, I took a closer look at my life. That person... Wait. They were real, right? They had to be. Ah, yes, I understand. I myself once had a similar epiphany. Now that I think about it, I met my darling husband thanks to a destiny called fate. A uh, destiny called fate? Isn't that a bit redundant? Besides, you should be careful what you say to a single woman. <laughs> anyway, if you'll excuse me. Oh, uh, is everything okay? Do you need something? You don't look well. Uh, maybe you should go to the nurse's. Uh, wait, you dropped something. Huh? This phone wallpaper... Now, now, mister. No cell phones at school. Hmm? That screen. I read downward. Love you. My! What a charming confession of love. Did you make this? Hey, I, uh, I have absolutely no clue what this kid is talking about. La, 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 I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Good. Never mind that. What's going on? Why do you have this screen cap? Oh. Oh, don't, don't tell me you got it online. The only ones who were on that server were... No, it couldn't be. There's no way. Are you kidding? No, no, no! Calm down, Mr. Yumi. Help! Someone call a doctor! Duh. Don't tell me. You're Tatsuya? I... Uh, I said all that? To you? I... 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 Oh, no, 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 no! Oh. oh, no! This can't be happening! I quit this school! I'm leaving! I'm never coming back! Oh, I can't live with this! Just kill me now! So, you really are. <laughs> um, I. I'm. <laughs> Maya! I'm Maya. It's me, damn it! You got a problem with that? <sighs> Why don't you say something? Jeez, you idiot. This is so embarrassing! But there was one thing I wanted to say. If we ever met face to face. 
I... I was able to turn my life around thanks to you. So, um... Thank you. <laughs> uh, wipe that smile off your face, or I'll wipe it off for you, with my fists. Anyway, um... If you don't mind. If you don't... <laughs> mind... Uh, maybe we could have dinner? <laughs> Quite rare for us to bump into each other here, isn't it? I guess it's because I usually go straight to practice after class. But today, I felt like looking around the school before heading over. After all, this is my last day here. And days flew by in the blink of an eye. But at the same time, it felt like this year would last for an eternity. <laughs> I've dedicated all three years of high school to boxing, and nothing else. Hmm. Is there really nothing else? Never mind. It's nothing. I guess hanging out with everyone at the dorm counts as something. We even made pancakes together. We had some good times. If we hadn't lived in the same dorm, we might have never met each other. It's hard to imagine. <laughs> I'll be leaving the dorm soon. But that doesn't change the fact that I'll always be your senpai. If you ever run into trouble, you can tag me in. Whatever happens, I'm on your side. found you. It was kind of nerve-wracking to come to the high school campus all by myself. Anyway, I'm here to drop off something Sonata-san forgot. He's usually so put together, but sometimes he can be just a little scatterbrained. Oh, speaking of forgetfulness, do you remember someone named Aragaki-san? He was at the dorm for a little while. I didn't really talk with him all that much, but whenever he crosses my mind, I feel this ache in my chest and unbearably sad. It's as if I've forgotten something important, though I'm not sure what. I get the feeling that there was something I had to do. I just don't know what it is or why I feel this way. Oh, um, sorry about that. You're really easy to talk to, so I kept going on and on. I appreciate that you always listen to what I have to say, though, Senpai. You even went with me to buy tea, and you don't treat me like I'm just a little kid. So, um, thanks for everything.
welcome. Aren't you the boy who used to talk to the monk upstairs? He actually called here trying to reach you. Seems like he was wondering how you were doing. Come to think of it, I think he left a message for you. What was it he said again? Hey, hey, don't give me that look. Just hang on a sec. Ah, found it. Here you go. I actually wrote it all down. Didn't think I had it in me, did you? Let's see. Oh, man, the handwriting is awful. Who the hell wrote this? I found my wife and son. My son's still a good-for-nothing punk. My wife is frigid as usual. She's like an old witch. What do you want? I'm on the phone! Hey, don't write this down, right? Lots happened, but I apologized a thousand times, and I worked to make things right. I guess you could say we fell in love all over again. I realized, instead of holding on to my pride, I needed to just suck it up and apologize. And it's all thanks to you. Well, you take care, kid. If it's meant to be, we'll see each other again. That's the gist of it. I'm pretty sure I got everything he said. Oh, and don't bother asking for a number. He didn't say. But like he said, you'll see him again if it's meant to be. Don't they say, like, fate lies in God's hands or something? Oh, wait, that'd be Buddha for the monk, huh? Anyways, that's that. If fate does bring you two back together, why don't you come party over here again? It's you, right? I'm... Maiko's father, if you remember. Do you have a minute to talk? I've been dwelling a little on what happened. Perfect. Uh, if you don't mind, let's take a walk down to the takoyaki stand. I'll buy you some. My treat. The food there sure is good. But you knew that already, didn't you? When I see this place... I remember all the times I'd come here with Maiko. She came here when she ran away from home, too. She really loved the takoyaki. She's a good girl. Wouldn't you agree? She's so good that I wonder if she's really my own child sometimes. She actually sent me a letter recently. It's chock full of details about her new life. She said she's made a lot of friends. Let's see. She's in charge of the rabbits at her new school and has had to get up early to clean the cages. They scolded her for forgetting her PE uniform. She forgot her homework and had to copy her friends. I guess she can be a bit absent-minded. I never knew that about her. Oh, and she did so well on her recorder test that she was asked to perform in front of everyone. Then she went on to talk about how she plays at the park by the school with her friends every day. Her mother's doing well, too. They're having a lot of fun together. <sighs> having fun. Must be nice. Nowadays, I just come home to an empty house. The rooms feel so big without those two around. I wonder if she feels the same way, living in a home with no father in it. 
Uh, we put her through so much because of our own problems. I feel terrible about it. By the way, I've actually got a bone to pick with you, too. Maiko must have really liked you, huh? She wrote all about it. I can't wait to grow up. That's why I'm drinking lots of milk. I'm going to marry him someday. What the hell is that about you, little punk? G you were taking advantage of my little Maiko, weren't you? Uh, maybe I haven't been the best dad. I'm still her father, damn it. And I'm not letting a guy like you touch my daughter with a ten-foot pole. I'll never let you marry her. And don't you forget it! hidden menu at Hagakure as well. Oh, yes. I've heard the same story. They say he tried a bite of some dish. Then he said it could use some fish flakes. So they put some in and sure enough, it was delicious. Now it's an item on our hidden menu. I'm a big fan of it myself. I had him come up with some ideas for Wokatsu too. Yes, he's the one. Sue Mitsu can put our coffee on the map too. Sure, his appearance and behavior are... How should I say this? Centric, but he knows everything about food and his palate is refined. He's in a league of his own among gourmands There's not a restaurateur around here who doesn't know him. Is he that famous? So when you heard he was planning to leave to tour the country I was shocked and disappointed of course, but I'm glad to hear he's doing well for himself I hear he's got a book coming out. It's very exciting. Even when he's far away. I can still feel him uh, Wait don't run that. Are the rumors about a King Suimitsu statue being built in this shopping district true? <laughs> oh, yes. I can't wait. I'll be rubbing it every day for good luck. Oh, are you a student from the area? Do you mind if we get a few words from you? Are you familiar with a high school student known as the Gourmet King? But I'd heard he wasn't interested in anything except food. Unless you mean you know him in the same way everyone else around here knows him. Thanks for your time. I'd love a chance to meet him myself one day. since the last time I saw you. Now, now, dear. They don't grow that fast. What must have happened is that we shrank. Isn't that right? Oh, 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 is that how it is? Looks like you got one over on me. Say, y you know our old shop here, uh, Bookworms? I'm thinking it's due for a makeover. Something fresh, avant-garde. I can't let Gekko Khan's new school building hog the spotlight. Oh, you think so? <laughs> I suppose that's just as well. I'm honored you like the place, young man. Speaking of the new school building, they've decided to replant the persimmon tree. It'll be moved to a special location on a hill overlooking the whole campus. Our dear boy will be able to watch over those students for many more years to come. I know the tree isn't actually our son, and yet... This makes me feel so happy. Ever since my dear heard the news, she's turned into a leaky faucet. Come on, give me a smile. Go, 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 go. Please, dear. I think your dentures are falling out. 
Anyhow, we'll be supporting the GeckoCon students with renewed strength in our hearts. Looking at you again, you really did grow, didn't you? You've overcome great hardships, I can tell. Come back and visit us any time. We'd always love to see you. Excuse me, I'm Miss Kamiki, Akinari's mother. My son talked about you a lot. I was just thinking about him. If you have time, would you like to stay and talk for a while? That's wonderful. Please sit down. Today is a special day. What a coincidence seeing you today. It must be another one of God's whims. Today is my son's, Akinari's, birthday. He'd be 20 if he was still alive. Only 19 years. It was too soon. He was almost an adult, but he never made it. Akinari had a genetic disease. I'm completely healthy, but him... <sighs> the doctors detected it when he was born. They knew he wouldn't live to see adulthood. Every day, I worried whether he'd wake up the next morning. I blamed myself for what he inherited. But he said something to me near the end. I'm sorry to have brought so much pain into your life, Mother. I'm glad that I was born into this world. I'm glad to have been your son. Thank you for the life you've given me. He, he suffered so much, and yet he still said that to me. But Akinari brought me so much happiness, too. Feeling his warmth as I carried him in my arms after he was born. Those tiny hands. <laughs> that first smile. Hearing his breathing as he slept at night. Every day, I was so grateful he was alive. <laughs> Every day, I found new joy in him. Now, I'm so alone. And there's nothing I can do. But my boy gave me so much. I have to keep going. Looking straight ahead. That's how I want to live. I'll eat the finest foods, visit the most exotic places. I'll do everything, absolutely everything that Akinari couldn't. I'll have so many stories to tell him about the things I've done on that day. When we meet again on the other side, if I didn't have that to look forward to, I don't know how I could go on. That reminds me, when my son's condition worsened, he started writing a children's story. But when I was cleaning out his room, I never found his notebook. He said he wanted you to be the first one to see it when he was done. Then he laughed and said I would be second. <laughs> I suppose he wasn't able to finish the story.
What? So, did you get to read the story? I... I see. So, you did? I'm so glad. That was my only regret. It was awful to think that he wasn't able to finish his project. Oh, you should hold on to his notebook. I'm sure that's what he would want to. I'll hear the story from him directly when I see him on the other side. Now I have one more thing to look forward to. I'm glad I could finally meet you. Thank you. Before I go, let this old woman give you one piece of advice. Take good care of the ones you hold dear. If you wait until their day comes, it's too late. Clinging to their cold bodies won't bring them back. Everyone who's born will die someday. Not just Akinari, or me, or even you. It's all the same. So before that happens, it doesn't take a grand gesture. You don't have to make a big production of it. But we all... If you love someone, let them know it. All go through life with the same struggles, the same heartbreak. We should all lift each other up with the same love and kindness as well. I'm sure you have something precious you can share with people too. Don't ever forget it.
coming up next. A special report on the Amazing Commodities Corporation, producer of Tanaka's Amazing Commodities. President Tanaka has made an undisclosed private expenditure that caused quite a stir in the media. With us is our reporter live on scene. Take it away. I'm reporting from the Amazing Commodities head office where a swarm of journalists has convened. Word has it that President Tanaka will be coming out shortly to make a statement. The tension in the air is thick. Thank you. We'll be looking forward to updates as things unfold. Back to the studio. The unaccounted for expenditure has sparked a massive investigation. Some theorize he is guilty of tax evasion. Oh, no question. This is President Tanaka we're talking about. All he cares about is lining his own pockets. And he does it by swindling his own viewers. He could become the richest man on the planet and still never be satisfied. Why doesn't he donate some of that money for a change? Damn Scrooge. Well, I'm sure he's not as bad as all that. Oh, this just in. Something's happened at the scene. President Tanaka has emerged. <laughs> he's carrying a microphone. It, it looks like he's about to sing. Ready to go in your TV. Tanaka's commodities. Everybody's ultimate friend in greed. Hi, everyone. Amazing Commodities is here for you year-round. Rain or shine, we have a monopoly on the cheapest, highest quality goods. Our customers shout for joy so loud it's considered noise pollution. Our stocks rise so high they're a hazard to birds. And we make losers every day out of people who don't buy. We're the only miracle left in this sad, desolate world. That's the amazing commodities guarantee. We look forward to your business. Oh, he, he's gone. What the hell are you doing? You call yourself a reporter? If you can't get one lousy comment out of him, you're just giving him free advertising. We'll have to interrupt you there as we've just received a fax. It, it's from President Tanaka. The message reads, Hi, this is Tanaka, the best friend your pocketbook ever had. And what's in my pocketbook is my own business. It's not my company's money. So what's it to them how I use it? But let me make one thing clear. I am not ashamed of a single thing. My contents is clear, dear viewers. So buy my products, guilt-free. Amazing commodities, here for you year-round, rain or shine. Buy now or you'll miss your chance. You'll see. Bye bye Apparently, he had no intention of revealing his use for the funds. Does he have no shame? Oh, this Tanaka guy. Just because he's made some money for himself doesn't mean that we're his little playthings. On behalf of the people, I have something to say, and I am not afraid to say it. Fat pigs like him who gorge themselves on the excesses of capitalism should be... Yes, thank you very much. This concludes our special report. With no clues as to the utilization of said funds, we can only hope that they went to humanitarian purposes. Next up, your daily glimpse into the stock market. This just in. We have reports that amazing commodities stocks have suddenly skyrocketed. 